Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm going to cover off two jigs that I use fairly frequently. Uh, one of them I use all the time and that's the one I'm going to start with today, an assembly jig and then I'm going to move over to a lap joint jig. So let's get started on the assembly jig. So some of you may be wondering what is an assembly jig. Well, let me show you quickly. When you're putting things together like picture frames or boxes and you want to align things and you're not sure if things are square, the best and the quickest way to do that is to have a jig that you know is 90 degrees. So move this out of the way. A jig that's 90 degrees in here. So all you have to do is move over, move your... Uh, your pieces over to it and you can check it. I use this all the time with picture frames, with boxes, anything that's square, uh, door frames, uh, anything that's square, I use this immediately because I know that it's square. Now I've made these in the past and every time I make one I there's an update or an upgrade to do it and I also make them bigger because I end up making bigger and bigger picture frames and I need something to align them. So today it's time time to make a bigger one. So the version today is MDF. I really like MDF for an assembly jig because it's really nice and flat. This one happens to be used. You can see that the back part of it is uh, had lots of wear and tear, but this side is good and I've even sanded it down. It's nice and smooth. The other thing that you're going to need is just a couple of pieces of wood. I prefer to use plywood for this and the reason is that plywood is stable because we're going to be gluing and tacking it down on here and the first thing we want to do with our pieces before we do anything is we want to take a little bit of an edge off one side and that's because when it's laying flat uh, little bits of dirt and dust and sawdust and so on can get in there and if you get that in there it it can give you a false reading. So if we take just a little bit of an edge of that away so that if there is any dust it'll slide underneath. Um, that just makes sure that we always get a good reading when we're aligning wood to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of an edge off this. You can do this with a router. You can do this on your table saw. You don't have to take much off. I'm just going to take my block plane uh, and just run it down a few times. And there's no rule as to how much you need to take off. Just whatever you think is going to be sufficient. Now the next thing I want to do is make sure that I get the right part there. So I'm going to put an arrow underneath because that's the bevel side right there. And I'm going to be gluing that down so it'll hide that arrow. And that's how I know where the bevel is going to be. Now when we make this jig you can see that I'm right up at the top corner here so I've got my top piece here and my side piece there. We never put them together for the same reason that we have a bevel in here that we can get a little bit of dust and dirt in there. So what we do is we pull the top, I'm pulling the top one, just pulling it back and it doesn't matter, not very much, just, um, just enough so that if you got some dirt in there you can whisk it away or blow it away and when you're putting your for example a picture frame it would still go in one way and then the bottom part would come up and it will still align nicely like that. Now aside from the fact that I wanted to make a bigger one of these there's two things that happen with these assembly frames because they're often gluing, so I'm often gluing something somewhere, um, what happens is I sometimes get glue ends up on one of these rails and it's really hard to get off, especially when it's plywood, it's really hard to get off. So what I'm going to do, a couple of things that I'm going to do. First of all, I've got my marking gauge here and I are, I've already preset it and I'm going to mark on both sides the top and you probably won't be able to see that pencil mark maybe down here and the reason that I'm doing that is now I want to put some tape on the inside of that line that I just made. I'm going to do it on both sides and 
I'm, as I've just talked about, I'm going to be using this, I'm going to be gluing this, um, my parts, I'm going to be gluing them on here. I've already talked about that. But here's why I put the tape on there. Because I get glue on here, I'm going to use paraffin wax and this time I'm going to put paraffin wax on both the sides so that if I do get some glue on there it's not going to stick. If it does stick it's, it's easy to flick off, it's very light and that's going to make these much handier to use. Okay, so there's two components that are waxed. The next thing that happens is I get wax on the base. And what I'm doing now, I'm, and that's the purpose of the tape, is I want to wax this all the way along on both sides. And I'm going to come down a little bit. This makes just a, a, an amazing difference on keeping glue out of your in this case off of the base so that you don't have to be picking glue off it just lifts off easily so I'm just going to show you in this area you can see that I'm up at the corner here and I'm putting water on there okay now I can take the tape off and I know where the wax is and where I can put the glue and the first one I'm going to put on is the narrow one so I know because that's going to be down, so I know it needs to go on just like that, and I'll line it up to the edge like that. So I'll put glue on there, and I don't really care that the glue is spread evenly because there's, there's really no pressure on here. It's really just a case of uh, and line it up there. Now, the next thing I need to do is apply some glue to the top. That base down there. And I'll just leave it a little bit proud. Now, because I have a ridge under there, I can't use my square. So what I always do, I always have a couple of these handy, just a little, a couple of little um, pieces of wood. They're all from the same piece of plywood. And now I can use that to align my jig. And now I'll know that that's perfect. And that's it. The second part of this video, and the reason that we use an assembly jig, or one of the reasons that we use an assembly jig, uh, and it comes from a question from one of my subscribers, and he asked, what is the strongest joint? Well, as it turns out, one of the strongest joints, if not the strongest, in my testing it is the strongest joint, is a simple lap joint. And all that is, is the wood cut basically cut in half and glued together and the reason it's so strong is because the glue is holding the pieces of wood together i've never seen a joint like this come apart always the wood breaks before the joint does so that's got to be one of the strongest if not the strongest joint you can make so we're going to be using this jig i've made this jig in the past i'm going to put a link later on you'll see that uh, this is a lap jig or a tenoning jig. Let me show you close up. So this is a tenoning jig or a lap joint jig. And the way it works, you simply put your wood on here, um, firm it in there and run it through the saw. And when you do, you will end up with a lap joint like this. And if you it, it, the way it would be as a tenoning jig, basically you wouldn't go quite as deep you'd, and you'd reverse it so you'd do both sides and then you would have a tenon. But we're going to do lap joints today. I'm going to show you how to set this thing up. Now I know a lot of you don't have these big wide fences like this, but look, here's the trick for this. When you're making this jig, and I'll, sh I'll show you the, the link in a little bit. Um, when you're making this jig, use something 
uh, wider, thicker on the outside, on your outboard side. This is all this jig looks like, but on your outboard side, if you use like some two by four or two inch thick material because you're going to have a narrower fence um, like on a DeWalt or Makita or portable saws like that have a much thinner fence and you will get much better stability by using something wide on the outboard and still get good stability with it. So let's have a look at how we use this jig. So the first thing I'm, st I'm going to be using MDF today. So there's some three quarter inch MDF. I'm not going to measure anything. I'm going to use my measuring bars because they're far more accurate than trying to use a tape. And these are three quarter inch. So I need to cut them in half. So basically we're going to end up with a, a half lap joint like that. So how do you know what half of three quarters is? Well, simple woodworking math three quarters of an inch, half of that, you double this denominator. So half of three quarters is three eighths. And that's my three eighths measuring bar right there. So I'm going to be using that to set up my blade. So there's a lap joint that I want to duplicate. And the first thing I want to do is I want to cut this line here. I'm sliding it up just like that. So what I want to do is move the fence ever so slightly until they abut together and that will be where I need to set the fence. Now you can see that that's going to, that's nice and slim in there. That means that's going to cut right up to that and including that shoulder. And the next thing I need to do now is set the height. So now to set the height of my blade, there's my three eighths. Remember that's half of three quarters. I'm going to set my measuring MDF on top of that. And I'm going to lower the blade. I don't want it to go onto here. So I'm going to drag this back a little bit. And now, so I've lowered that blade down and you can see if I move this back and forth, that blade doesn't move. So I'm going to raise it up ever so slowly until that blade catches. There it is right there. I can feel it just barely touching that blade. So like a lot of things in woodworking, there's always exceptions to the rule or there can be exceptions to the rule. And I've always said, you never use a miter gauge with the fence. Well, as it turns out, you can use a miter gauge with a fence, but only if you're doing a partial cut. If I was cutting this right off, that would be very, very dangerous. This is going to kick back and, and be real ugly. But when I'm just making a partial cut, we can do that. So I'm going to do that on both of these parts here. And now to use the jig, the first thing we have to do is to reset the height to two inches because we need to cut right up to that line, right? So I'm doing the same thing and I'm just going to raise that blade and I'm going to move that back and forth until it just barely catches that blade. So just so you can see what I'm doing here, I'm just using a wider piece of wood here instead of this little one that I had here. And I'm using the wider piece of wood, that way I get both sides of the blade. So I can just get a little bit more accurate reading in there. And that looks, I can just feel that just barely touching in there. So that should be good. So that's the cut we're going to make. All right, let's have a look at these and see what that looks like. There we go. Okay. Okay, now that's, I got lucky on this one. Um, usually I might have to make a couple of test cuts, but that actually turned out to be just perfect there. So that's just how easy it is to make lap joints. So here we are back at the assembly jig, uh, and that's why these two projects are together in the same video is because they complement one another. For example, if you're making cabinet doors and using lap joints. Um, now you want to assemble them, make sure you've got perfect 90 degree corners uh, and that's what this jig is for. Let's go quickly back to the table saw uh, and have one last look at that lap joint jig. 
Well, and that concludes my video for today. Making a lap joint, super strong lap joints, and then the assembly jig, and you can assemble these on that assembly jig, and that way you make sure that you get things absolutely perfectly aligned. For example, if you're making doors, you want your doors to be absolutely square. I didn't make the jig a few months ago. I did make this jig, uh, and the video for it is posted over here. You'll be able to go over and have a look at it. It's a great little project, easy to do, uh, and you can get some great results from it. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.